How's it going guys? It's Ryan here, and welcome to my low level slash Iron Man solo guide for Vindicta and Gorvek. Uh, now, unlike the Greg guide from last week, uh, Vindicta and Gorvek are absolutely amazing with low tier gear. In this video, I'm going to be using tier 75 weapons and tier 70 armor and we're gonna absolutely wreck the thing. Uh, so this is a boss you totally could camp even with the lower stats. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right into the guide. All right, so now for the table of contents. Uh, you can click on the timestamps if you're not on a mobile device and it will take you to that part. Uh, otherwise, in the description below, I will also have the timestamps there. Uh, so if you're on a mobile device, just go to the description and then click on whatever part you wanna go to. Okay, some info about the boss. Uh, Vindicta and Gorvek have a combat level of 1,000, have a maximum hit of 3,000 with melee and 4,500 with ranged, have 200,000 life points, are not poisonous, they are immune to poison, and they have no weakness. Okay, so now let's talk about requirements. Uh, the only actual hard requirement uh, to enter the boss fight is you need level 80 attack. Uh, that being said, uh, I'd recommend that you have at least a tier 75 melee or magic weapon, 70 plus defense, and 70 plus prayer. Another really nice ability to have is the devotion ability. Now, the reason I'd recommend not using range at this boss is the majority of the times you're getting hit, you're going to be hit with melee attacks. Uh, and basically with the combat triangle, you're putting yourself in the way of a lot of damage that's very unnecessary. Uh, so if you can, use melee or magic. Alright, so now we're going to talk about gear and invent setup. Uh, as a general rule though, it's pretty simple. Use the best beast of burden you can, use the highest tiered weapon and armor you can, and use the best stat boosting potions you can. Uh, that also includes a defense potion, don't forget the defense potion, it does make a very significant difference. So yeah, let's go into that part. Alright guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to be talking about gear, uh, and we're going to be starting off talking about the Iron Man setup. Uh, so for a typical Iron Man setup, uh, what a lot of Iron Men do is either they will start off by getting a Chaotic Staff in Dungeoneering, uh, or, uh, and a lot more people make this choice, uh, they'll go straight for a Greater Runic Staff, uh, because it's a non-degradable level 75 weapon that is free, and it's way easier to get than a Chaotic for most people. You can just AFK Runecrafting. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using. Like I said before, we've got a Greater Runic Staff, uh, we've got Subjugation Gloves, Subjugation Boots, Subjugation Gown, Subjugation Garb, and a Subjugation Hood. So full Subjugation. Uh, we've got just a Skill Cape on, uh, a Ceridoman's Hiss as an amulet, obviously there are better amulets, but like I said, on an Iron Man, this is probably what you would have. And then for Ring, I'm choosing to bring a Ring of Vigor. Obviously a Ring of Death would be fine, and same goes with the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. Okay, for Aura, I'd recommend either Vampirism, or you could take a Runic Accuracy Aura. The uh, last thing we have is a Sign of Life, just because in general it's a good thing to have. You could obviously replace this with a Scrimshaw. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at Invent Setup. Uh, the invent setup is as follows. Uh, we've got a grand magic potion and a grand defense potion. Uh, obviously, it's just the best tradable potions you can get. Uh, so we've got a grand magic and a grand defense potion. Uh, we've got a ward of subjugation. Does not matter what shield this is as long as it's a shield. Uh, we've got runes because we are using magic, you need runes. It doesn't really matter what type, just make sure that you can cast uh, whatever the highest level spell you can cast. So for me, that will be surge spells. Okay, next up in my invent, I've got a heart teleport. Uh, what this let me do is it'll let me teleport straight to the heart of Gilnor. Now, if you don't have a heart teleport, all you're going to want to do is just home teleport uh, and then go right here to the bandit camp and then just run southeast and you'll get there either way. Uh, next, I've got five restore flasks. You don't need to flask them. You could bring prayer potions. Does not really matter. Just something to restore your prayer. Uh, now, last off, I have a bunch of sharks uh, and then this is a war tortoise uh, that is also full of sharks. You can go better food than sharks. I wouldn't go much worse than sharks. Uh, you could take monkfish if you really wanted, uh, but then you're going to find yourself eating a lot. Okay, now I'm going to talk about abilities. Uh, the important abilities you're going to want to make sure you have, uh, I mentioned this before, but Devotion is great to have, uh, Debilitate is great to have, and then the reason you've got your shield is so you can quickly switch to it and then use Resonance just like that uh, for the range hits in the second phase. Uh, so those are all the sort of useful abilities to have. In terms of DPSing, if you've got Sunshine, great, uh, it's very nice. If you don't have Sunshine, just use Meta, and it's all good in that sense. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about is my quick prayers. Uh, I've got them set to Augury, Protect from Melee, and Protect Item. Uh, those are going to be your prayers for the entire time. Just remember that you will have to switch to Protect from Missiles at certain points in the fight. Alright guys, once you get to the Heart of Gilnor, uh, you're going to want to go southeast. Uh, that is going to be where the Zaros encampment is. Uh, so just basically follow me, go as I go, and we'll get there. Uh, now what I'm going to talk about is the kill count. Uh, to enter the boss fight, you need to kill 40 Zerosian followers, so those would be Ancient Warriors, uh, these would work as well, the Abyssal Demons, uh, anything like that, the Ancient Rangers, and as well as the Ancient Mages, all those would work uh, to get your kill count out. Uh, so make sure you've got 40 kill count, as you can see right now, uh, I've already got 117, so I am good for a couple instances, uh, so I'm going to go straight ahead and straight through, uh, but otherwise, uh, what you'd want to do is you want to get your kill count. Now, it's worth mentioning, one of these monsters can be aggressive, as you can see right there, uh, but also, uh, you can leave and come back and your kill 
kill count will stay, uh, which is really, really nice, uh, because what it means is uh, you can get all your kill count and then bank, re-gear, get all your food, get all your potions, and then come back. Uh, so yeah, let's go into the fight now. Okay, now that you're geared and you know where you're going, let's take a look at the mechanics. The first half of the fight, Vindicta will use the same attack pattern. Uh, Vindicta will attack with melee twice, use a hurricane, attack with melee twice, use a dragon firewall, and then attack with melee three times. Uh, in the second half of the fight, Vindicta will call Gorvek the dragon, and then the attack pattern will change to melee attack, ranged attack, melee attack, dragon fire, and that will repeat as well. Okay, so in the first half of the fight, uh, you can resonance the hurricane attack, but I'd totally not recommend it. You're wasting DPS, and it usually doesn't hit that hard anyway, uh, so I would not really recommend doing it, but you do have the option to quickly switch to your shield and rezo it, because you do know when it's going to come. Uh, now, the actual main thing that you want to pay attention to for the first half of the fight is whenever Vindicta raises his swords, a dragon fire attack is coming. Basically, stay out of the purple. A big purple wave of dragon fire is going to land on the ground, and it will stay there, and you just want to make sure you're not standing in it, because you're going to be hit between 750 and 1,000 very consistently until you get out of it. Now let's talk about the second half of the fight. Uh, even though a lot of people talk about how this part's harder, it's actually a lot easier on an Iron Man than the first part of the fight, and if you do it right, you will not need any food for this part. Uh, so as I said before, the attack rotation is melee, ranged, melee, dragon fire. Uh, the trick is, the ranged attack has almost an 100% hit chance, doesn't matter what your gear is, uh, but you can take advantage of that. You know when it's coming, and you can rezo it. It can hit up to 4.5k, and a lot of the time that means you heal yourself up to full every single time he goes through this rotation, and you have a rezo. Uh, so basically, you're going to use rezo whenever you can. Now, when resonance is on cooldown, you're going to want to use devotion or debilitate and switch to protect or deflect range. Uh, what this is going to do is it's basically going to nullify this range attack, so when you're not healing from it, it's not going to hit you much, or nothing at all, uh, in the case of devotion. Uh, so so that's really the main strat there, and even though it's a lethal attack, it happens infrequently enough that you should really never have any sort of cooldown. You should always be able to either rezo it, devo it, or debilitate it. And what that does is it basically makes the most lethal attack almost useless. And now the last thing to talk about is you want to avoid the dragon fire by running perpendicular to the position of Gorbek. Uh, because what Gorbek is going to do, or Vindicta and Gorbek, uh, they're going to fly to a different part of the map, a different part of the arena, and then they're just going to shoot straight towards you uh, with a bolt of fire. Uh, so as long as you're running perpendicular to them, uh, it will not hit you at all. Uh, but don't worry if that sounds confusing, all these mechanics, because uh, now I'm going to show you all of them in an actual fight. We're going to go through one complete kill. So yeah, let's jump into the Iron Man kill. This would work the exact same way with melee, and obviously, if you're not an Iron Man, you can get better gear, uh, it'll just go even faster for you. But all the strategies are exactly the same. Alright guys, so this is going to be one complete kill uh, at regular speed. Once I've mentioned the same things over and over again, because it does get quite repetitive, uh, what I might do is I might speed it up towards the end. Uh, but basically for now, uh, the boss spawns, you're going to put your prayers up, you're going to pot up, and you're just going to resume attacking the boss. Uh, now watch out uh, for when the uh, blades are going to go up. As you're going to see, in just a second, uh, he's going to raise his blades. Uh, one more hit, there you go. And that just means that the dragon fire is coming. Uh, all you have to do is just stay out of the purple, and it's as simple as that. And now the focus for the first phase of this fight, uh, you're just going to be laying off as much damage per second as you possibly can on the boss. And now you will notice right now I'm using a vamp aura, so I'm using a tier 75 weapon uh, with no accuracy boosting aura, and I am hitting fairly fine. I mean, I don't have a 100% hit chance, uh, but it's not noticeably bad. Uh, so yeah. Once again, the same attack rotation, as soon as you see the fire, you just make sure you're not standing in it, and it's as simple as that. And now what you will see me do right here is I'm going to pop off a Devotion. Uh, you don't have to do that, uh, you don't have to use Devo or Debilitate in the first phase, I just chose to just to sort of elongate the trip, I wanted to see how long I could last, and you know, it's never a bad thing to do. If you don't feel like eating and interrupting your DPS, you can also just use one of those abilities, and you know, you can keep damaging the boss for a little longer. Uh, so there you go, blades are raised. Uh, now what I try here is I try to kite the boss. I would not recommend it. What kiting is, is when you run away from the boss and the boss's attacks don't work properly, I wouldn't recommend it because it just messes up the boss's rotation and it just makes the fight more confusing. Uh, so my recommendation would just be to stand in one spot and take the hits and just move away from the purple, and it's as simple as that. Uh, so really, the first part of the fight, it's really not too bad. All you're doing is you're laying on as much damage as you can, and you're just staying out of the purple. And that's really the only thing you have to pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the dragon is going to come in just a second uh, as the second part of the fight happens. Now, this is the part that's super, super easy. It's amazingly easy as long as you do it right. So what I'm going to do is it starts with a melee attack. So I'm going to wait. There we go. That was the melee hit. Now what I'm going to do is the next attack. The second attack is always a range hit. So what I did is I put it on my shield and I resoed myself a 1.7k heal right there. And then instantly, uh, the protect from melee comes back on. Uh, now, dragon jumped. What I'm doing is I run perpendicular... Uh, to where the dragon landed, and that way the fire will not hit me. 
and then it's the exact same thing repeated over and over again. Uh, so you wait for the one melee attack, you put on the protect from range, and then uh, that time I use debilitate, and this time right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use devotion. Uh, as you can see, protect from range, I'm going to throw on devotion, and now that range hit that's about to hit me is entirely nullified. And then I'm going to put the protect from melee back on, and resume attacking. And that's the entire kill, it's very very easy, that's all you have to do. Uh, just try and run perpendicular to that fire attack uh, so that it's not ever hitting you. And yeah, exact same thing, I'm going to switch to my protect from range right here. Oh no I'm not, I'm actually going for a rezo on this one. Uh, so we're doing the rezo, and look at that, a 3.3k heal. Uh, and then yeah, it's, it's very simple, you just do the exact same thing over and over again, whittle down the HP, run perpendicular so that doesn't hit us, uh, now we're gonna put on the protect from range, and we're gonna debilitate, just like that, and we're basically saving ourselves from getting hit, we're nullifying that big hit unless we can heal off it. And something you will notice from this second phase is we haven't had to eat any food yet. Uh, the reason being, anytime our HP gets low, whether we get hit by a magic attack or a melee attack, uh, we totally heal it all back up with the resonance, and that's why this boss is so good on an Iron Man. Uh, is just you can always make sure you're staying safe, you can always be safe from the attack. And now one thing that is worth noting, if everything's on a cooldown, if your Devo's on cooldown and your Debilitate's on cooldown, you don't have a Resonance, if you don't have access to anything, um, what you can totally do is just put on Protect from Range and it should max around like a 2.2k, so it's not gonna like one hit you or anything. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the kill, uh, may as well not speed it up just for this last bit, uh, you're just going to see a repetition of everything we've looked at so far, it just works the exact same way, as you can see I keep my protect from melee on right here because I am going to rezo uh, right here, through in the rezo, and get a nice little 3.3k heal in. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the end of the kill, uh, we'll do a couple more DPS's, uh, my apologies if you hear that sound, uh, someone's running around upstairs in my house, um, but yeah, that is basically your complete kill on how to do it, and it really is easy as pie. Uh, so yeah, there you go, uh, kill confirmed, we'll grab the loot, and victory is ours. So yeah, as you can see, uh, I could last probably 12 or 13 kills, uh, which is like actually around an hour. Uh, with this low level setup and this gear. Uh, so yeah, it really is a boss I would recommend trying out if you're a lower level player or you've got an Iron Man, as long as you can get the mechanics down. Okay, now I'm going to talk about potential loot. Uh, what you can get uh, from this boss is the Crest of Zaros, which currently, based on the date, check the date that I'm uploading this video because prices do change, uh, but currently that goes for about 18 mil. Uh, other thing that's available, you can get the Dormant Anima Core gear, uh, a Dragon Rider Lance that's currently around 24 mil, a uh, Zerosian Essence, which is about 280k, and the other two options are the Glimmering Scale and the Imbued Blade Slice, which are the two boss pets that are displayed on screen right there. Uh, so yeah, some really good loot here. This is one of the more profitable God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses. Uh, and then the other thing worth noting is the common drops are also quite valuable as well. Uh, coal, you can get noted dragon bones, uh, just lots of other good stuff. And that's it for the video, uh, so thank you all so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, if anyone has any questions about anything, whether it's like what should I gear myself with, anything like that, uh, just let me know in the comments section below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, but really that's it for the guide, so good luck everyone, hopefully this helps you uh, get your first kill or make your trips longer, and hopefully uh, some of you guys learn something. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be about it from me, have a good one, and peace out.